the PlayStation 3 reference tool was used by developers to test their software and in comparison to the retail PS3 is very different in looks looks more like a DVD player or set top box this PS3 weighs about 5 kilograms the reference tool weighs 18 kilograms and is a lot deeper too let's have a close up and look at the various connections and so on on the front so bear with me while I just adjust okay so on the right here we have the blu-ray drive the power switch system initiate and network initiate buttons and reset switch so these two are so you can restore the system to its like, factory state we have status light and drive selects now using the XMB menu you can change between hard drive and blu-ray drives across here we have GPO general purpose output and GPI general purpose input these lights and switches are used by the system and software being developed along here we have two hard drive bays which take two 400 gigabyte hard drives this is the main system hard drive and this is like a blu-ray drive emulator both these drives can be ejected when the system is in standby down here we have SD card slot, memory stick pro slot, compact flash, six USB uh, sockets one which is labelled extra and a foot switch connector which is rather odd if anyone can tell me what that's actually used for the PSP reference tool developer tool whatever it's called also has that as well let's now look at the back connectors we have the power switch and mains input this seems to be some kind of guard they put on there we have AV multi out which is very much like on the PlayStation it has VGA which is very nice I prefer HDMI but VGA is something that the PS3 was lacking I don't think there was a lead you could get to connect um, your PS3 to VGA monitor perhaps a HDMI converter but certainly that wasn't something so easy to do down here we have a single HDMI port and we have digital optical out now oddly there are versions of this reference tool with the same model number that has two HDMI's it might actually be behind there yes it's actually behind there and depending on the model and the firmware you can actually output to two HDMI's at the same time uh, this is covered up as well let's just go down a bit uh, that is two extra LAN sockets which they clearly don't want you to use we've got the main LAN socket I've tried and connected that to my uh, router and it connects fine you can go online uh, there's an antenna for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and across here this is very nice you've got surround sound analog output you've got a developer LAN so this is intended to be connected to the development PC where you're actually making the software and then you use a web interface to actually get into uh, this ref reference tool so you can debug what software it's running and on the very left here we have this sealed off part this is some kind of serial port that's for surface personnel only apparently so you can see here how the hard drives connect to the main board there's a number of uh, cards that have plugged in it's actually got Sony on the main board so they seem to have actually made the computer I'm guessing it is basically a PC but they've emulated the PS3 by the way it only emulates the PS3 you can't play PS1 or PS2 games on it there's just a number of heat sinks here and that's basically it there's a power supply here as well and it's very nice um, there's a number of panels on top which I've taken off so it's all very nicely separated and uh, shielded which is very good right so I've booted the uh, PS3 reference tool and now I'm going to show you the debug options and I'm also going to run an actual retail game which would be some Formula 1 game so a lot of the options are similar to a proper retail PS3 but that's different install package files and that app folder as well you can see I have actually saved from an actual game so that seems to be working fine I'm going to scroll across and then we go down let's go back to these settings the debug settings are right at the bottom 
when we finally get there, yeah, debug settings. Now, absolutely loads of debug settings. As you can see, game type debugger, game output resolution. There's absolutely loads. Some of them are obvious game output sound, but some are not so obvious. Maybe some people know what they're used for. There's a region settings, which defaults to North America for some reason. I don't know why. Um, you can pretend it's another region. That's good. Fake free space might be interesting. To make a game think you've got less space left. And check it reacts correctly by saying you can't save. That's just a guess. Uh, exception handlers. A lot of fairly obvious debug stuff and some not so obvious stuff. Yeah, some of these options ask for text input. You can format their Blu-ray emulator, which is a hard drive. That acts as a Blu-ray drive. Presumably that reason for that was so that you can easily change the files about, uh, about before you actually burn the Blu-ray drive. Let's check that's all correct. I don't know what that HOSTFS is. It would be very good to know that. Um, connection status this with debug. We'll get to that later, shall we see. Another one that takes a text input. Loads and loads of debug options. I so said I don't know what half of them are actually used for. Some obvious, some not. WLAN is obviously Wi Fi. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working on my unit because it needs an aerial. So I've got to sort that out. Application type takes a text input. And that is about it. So if we actually start the game now, Formula 1 Championship Edition, just to show that it does actually run absolutely fine, but that is about it. It boots, it plays, so you've basically got a very expensive PlayStation 3. So we're now going to look at the development tool, which we get when we go to 192.168.0. Dot two in the web browser or whatever uh, IP address the PS3 reference tool has. So enter in administrator for the username and password, that's the default settings. We're just going to log in and now we get all these options. So there's lots of different options like networking, settings, emulator, boot options, built in tests, and so on. So we're going to look at boot parameters debugger mode, tool mode, emulator, uh, development mode, whether it's a 60 gig or 20 gig mod model it's emulating. Uh, you can even turn off the power on beep if you want. That's the network settings, you need that for uh, to access the development tool. The build and test uh, is quite good, quite helpful. To, you know, you've bought one of these and you want to make sure it's working. Uh, you can update various parts of the PS3 reference tool and it's just got a log of when that was last done. Uh, the target refers to the PS3 reference tool itself, so there's a bit of the information there. And uh, see there's no, no files on the hard drive, I don't think, for the emulator, so nothing appears. Date and time, time zone defaults to Japan, but it has at least got the right date and time. You can download this uh, setting file and you can also upload one as well so that's nice and useful. There's a network settings. Yeah. So that's for the PS3 reference tool itself. Uh, again another update option. That's for the actual part that communicates with the PS3 reference tool and uh, your computer. So let's just show you the built-in self-test which you see here which would test a number of features of the PS3 reference tool. Now you have to do this when the reference tool is in standby mode. You can't do it when it's fully powered on. So you have to have the power switch on but just in standby mode. So it tests the fan and the memory of the target system so that's the emulated PS3. The fan will go very loud during this test, so that's a warning for you. Fortunately, you can't hear it in this video. You can just hear me talking. <laughs> um, so it's testing memory at the moment. 
then the CP is the communications processor. So that is the link between the PS3 reference tool and the computer. That's what provides the debugging uh, features which are say you need the SDK I think to properly take advantage of that. It's almost done now so it's tested the software version, the CPU and it's just testing the memory of the CP. The CP also has its own flash memory and here's the results. Doesn't really mean much to me but I'm sure someone can work it out but that's the built-in test very handy. I'm just going to quickly show you my network settings. So that's my local area connection. And look at the details. So it's got 192.168.0.1. That's the key thing. So it needs to be set to a static address with that value. And it mustn't be added to a bridge. And then you just put in 192.168.0.2 and it works.